Chapter 12, Earth's Evolution. Birth of a planet. The history of the Earth began about 13.7 billion years ago with the Big Bang. This provided the elements along with material from former stars to form the solar system. As material collected, high velocity impacts of matter called planetismals caused Earth's temperature to increase. Iron and nickel melted and sank to form the metallic core, while rocky material rose to form the mantle on Earth's crust. Okay, so here is a Big Bang Theory, our galaxy forms, okay, with a solar nebula that flattens and spins, a material of different densities uh, will segregate, segregate out, denser materials in the center, lighter materials towards the outside, okay, um, constant bombardment of small planetismals, uh, impacting the Earth, we, the Earth gets larger, um, and then the, um, the metals sink towards the center, and the rocky uh, materials go out towards the outside, and then we have our, well, our moon and our, our atmosphere form. Okay. So Earth's primitive atmosphere, which consistently, uh, consistent mainly of HO2 va water vapor and CO2 um, carbon dioxide formed by a process called outgassing. Gases trapped in the planet's interior were released by volcanic eruptions. This process continues today. Water vapor condenses to form clouds and rainwater wa that form the oceans. About 3.5 billion years ago, photosynthesizing bacteria began to release oxygen. The oxygen levels steadily increased over time. Eventually, oxygen levels were sufficient for ozone to develop in the atmosphere. Those outgassing produce acidic conditions that cause an accelerated rate of weathering of Earth's rocky surface. Products of this weathering were carried to the oceans, thus increased the salinity of the oceans, made them saltier. Oceans also served as a depository for carbon dioxide. A nice carbon dioxide sink. So Precambrian history. The Precambrian, which is divided into the Archaean and the Proterozoic eons, span almost 90% of Earth's history. Much of Earth's stable continental crust was created during this time. Partial melting of the mantle formed volcanic island arcs and ocean plateaus. These crustal fragments collided and created to form large coastal provinces. The Precambrian, okay, uh, much of our stable continental crust was created during this time. Large crustal areas were assembled to larger blocks called cratons, and these cratons form the core of modern continents. Okay, so we have um, these plates and and. Uh, and they um, eventually collided to form these large, um, large continents. Okay. Supercontinents, large land masses that consisted of all or nearly all the existing continents. So Pangaea was the most recent uh, supercontinent that had all the continents all together, but we may have had a larger one prior to it called Rodinia. Splitting and reassembling of supercontinents have generated most of Earth's major mountain belts. Supercontinents have also profoundly affected Earth's climate over time. Okay, so here is a possible configuration of Rodinia, which has North America here, South America, Australia, Antarctica, Africa, Northern Europe, India over here. Okay. The Phanerozoic encompasses 452 million years ago, it's divided into the Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic eras. The Paleozoic era is dominated by continental collisions as Pangaea began to assemble. This formed the Caledonian, the Appalachian, and the Ural Mountains. So here we have formation of Pangaea. So these continents approached each other and collided. Okay, formed our, so our Caledonian Mountains formed here. Okay. During the Mesozoic era, in the early Mesozoic, much of the land was above sea level. By the middle of Mesozoic, seas invaded western North America. Pangaea began to break apart, and westward moving uh, plate of North America began to override the Pacific plate. It resulted in crustal deformation along the entire western margin of North America. This formed the Sierra Nevada and the Rocky Mountains. During the Cenozoic era, much of North America was above sea level throughout the Cenozoic. Eastern and western margins of the continent experienced markedly contrasting events. The Atlantic and Gulf Coast regions removed from the active plate boundaries were tectonically stable. In the west, the Laramide orogeny, Rocky Mountains, was ending, the Basin Range province was forming, and volcanic activity was extensive. Earth's first life. The first known organisms were single-celled bacteria, prokaryotes, which lacked a nucleus. 
One group of prokaryotes, called cyanobacteria, use solar energy to synthesize organic compounds thus producing their own food. Fossil evidence of these bacteria include layered mounds called stromatolites. Paleozoic marks the first experience of life forms with hard parts such as shells, result in abundant Paleozoic fossils. Life in the early Paleozoic was restricted to the seas and consisted of several invertebrate groups including trilobites, cephalopods, sponges, and corals. So here we have, have uh, like a cephalopod, there's some sponges, and of course we got some corals, okay, and we have a trilobite. During the Paleozoic, organisms diversified dramatically. Insects and plants moved onto the land. Lobe finned fishes adapted to the land and became the first amphibians. Large tropical swamps in the Pennsylvanian period became the major coal deposits of today. Here's one of our coal, Pennsylvania age coal swamp. A mass extinction at the close of the Paleozoic destroyed 70% of all vertebrate species on land and 90% of all marine animals. The Mesozoic, literally like the era of middle life, is often called the age of reptiles. Organisms that survived the extinction at the end of the Paleozoic began to diversify. Gymnosperms, cycads, conifers, and ginkgos became the dominant trees of the Mesozoic. Reptiles became the dominant land animals. First reptiles were small, but they evolved rapidly, particularly the dinosaurs. Diversi diversity of reptiles included large carnivorous dinosaurs, even larger herbivore dinosaurs, such as the Potosaurus, Pterosaurs, or flying reptiles, and Archaeopteryx, the pre predecessor of modern birds. So here's a picture of Archaeopteryx. There's a fossil of Archaeopteryx. And as Archaeopteryx had um, features you'd find on a reptile and, and features you'd find on, on birds. So here, long vertebrate tail is a reptilian feature. Tail feathers is a bird feature. Wing claws is a reptile feature. Airfoil wings is a bird feature. At the close of the Mesozoic, many reptile groups became extinct. Extinct. extinct sorry, the few. A few types survived, including turtles, snakes, and lizards. In the Cenozoic, mammals replaced the reptiles as the dominant vertebrate life form on land. Two groups evolved, the marsupials and the placentals. One tendency was for some mammal groups to become very large. Late Pleistocene extinctions eliminated these large animals. Flowering plants, angiosperms, strongly influenced the evolution of both birds and um, herbivorous mammals throughout the Cenozoic.